Given a function, we can calculate its derivative, denoted f prime of x, or sometimes the derivative of f with respect to x. This notation just follows from a definition of derivative. Derivative is measuring the change in f, how much f is changing, so f of x plus h minus f of x, over the change in x, x plus h minus x would just be h, and then you take the limit of that as h goes to zero to give you the instantaneous rate of change of your function. Recall, this just measures the slope of the tangent line at any point x. For example, if you just have the function y equals x, and you want to calculate its derivative, the derivative of just the function x, you can look at the graph of that function, and we can ask, well, what is the slope at any given point? And notice, no matter what point you pick on here, it has the same slope, a slope of 1. So that derivative would just be 1. Or if, if instead you just took a constant function, maybe a function like, like the function that's always equal to 2, for example. So, so here's a function that's, that's always equal to 2. So it should be a flat horizontal line, always equal to 2. What is its derivative? Well, the derivative of that function is just going to tell us what is the slope. But at any given point, the slope is horizontal. It's exactly equal to 0. Now, sometimes it's more complicated to calculate these derivatives. For example, if you want to calculate the derivative of a function like x squared, you can't just look at the graph of it. Because you'll notice the slope is changing. When you're over here, you have a negative slope then you have a zero slope, then you have a positive slope, so it's changing. So it won't just be something like zero or one. Sometimes it's negative, zero, sometimes it's positive. So we need to follow our definition. Okay, let's see what we get. The limit as h goes to zero, plug in to your x squared x plus h, you get x plus h squared minus, plug in x, so you just have x squared all over h. What is x plus h squared? Well, that's just going to be x plus h times x plus h. And that product is just all the ways of multiplying pieces from the first with pieces from the second. You could do x with x to get x squared. You could do x with h to get xh. Or you can do this x with that h. So there are two ways to get x times h, and you have h times h for h squared. Subtract off the x squared, and you're left with the limit as h goes to 0 of canceling those x squareds of a 2xh plus h squared all over h. Then divide through by that h. Both pieces have an h on top, so you can divide through with that h. And you get the limit as h goes to 0 of just a 2x, because these h cancels, plus just a single h. And then we ask, what happens as h goes to 0? Well, as h goes to 0, that last h goes to 0, leaving you with just 2x. Why is it 2x? Well, let's think. If you add some negative value, like negative 1, and you look at the slope there, this claims that the tangent line should have a slope of negative 2. You plug in negative 1, it should be negative 2. And sure enough, if you were to look at the slope at that point, the tangent line to that point, it would be minus 2. If you were to go somewhere like positive 1, and you look at the slope of the tangent line to that point, while well, plug in positive 1, it would have a slope of positive 2. Okay, so this is really great. Calculating the derivative gives you some inter interesting information about your function. It tells you how quickly it's changing at any given instant. But, but maybe this process seems a little bit tedious to you. And, and so what we're going to want to do is come up with some shortcuts. Is there a way so that when we calculate the derivative of x squared, we don't have to go through this every time, but we can do it a little bit faster? 
Or, or how about x cubed or x to the fourth or x to the fifth or x to the sixth? And so the first shortcut we're going to do is going to be called the power rule. And it's going to give us a way of calculating the derivative of x to any power n. And so what we're going to do is we're going to calculate out this one time in general, but that will give us then the rule that we can use whenever we want to. So if you come across a x to the 17 in the wild, you'll be able to instantly calculate its derivative. So let's think about how this works. What would be the derivative of x to the n? Well, we can see the limit will be the limit as h goes to 0 of x plus h. You have to plug in x plus h to the nth power minus x to the nth power, because you just plug in an x the second time, divided by h. Okay, now that we have this, you, you might be a little bit stuck on the first term. What is x plus h to the nth power? So, so let's come over here and think about it. x plus h to the nth power would be x plus h times x plus h times x plus h again and again and again n times. So, so if you have n copies of, of x plus h being multiplied with itself, Let's think about what that would give you. This is all the possible ways of, of taking a, 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 a term from each of these and multiplying them together. For example, you, you could do the x times the x times all the x's, and all those together would give you x to the n. Or what, what you might do is, is you might want to do this x times this x times all the x's, but then multiplied by the last h. Then you only have x to the n minus 1 copies of x and an h at the end. But it didn't have to be this last h. You could have picked, say, this first h and then all the other x's. That also would give you n to x to the n minus 1, n minus 1 copies of x, and an h. And so it turns out there, there are n different ways of getting x to the n minus 1 times h, depending on which h you pick. You could pick the second h and all the other x's, or the third h and all the other x's, and so on. So there are n different ways to get terms like this. And, and then it continues in a similar fashion. You, you could also get two h's and the rest could be x's. So you could have two h's and h squared and the rest would be x's, and x to the n minus 2. n minus 2 copies of n, x and 2 copies of h. And you can count those up and there would be, I don't know, however many copies of, of those and, and so forth. You could have three copies of h and n minus three copies of x's and so forth. So it would look something like this in the expansion. Okay, that's all we need to know is it's going to look something like that. Let's, let's plug that in up here. So, so now we're going to subtract off this x to the n piece. So subtracting that off from here, subtracting it from this expression, you're subtracting off that x to the n piece. We'll just leave you on the top of your limit with an n x to the n minus 1 h, that's this term right here, plus, I don't know, however many copies, I don't know what that number is, it's, you know, n or n squared, who cares, whatever it is, of x to the n minus 2 times h squared, plus, plus some other terms. So something with an h cubed piece, something with an h to the fourth piece, and so forth. And that will all be divided by h. And we're taking the limit as h goes to zero. But notice what happens now. When I divide by h, that h will be gone. That h, one of them will be gone, but I'll still have an h piece. And, and likewise, the next term would have an h cubed in it, so when I cancel one of the h's, it still has an h squared, and so forth and so on. And so what do I end up with? Well, now taking the limit as h goes to 0, this whole thing will go to 0, because it still has an h. And all the other terms still have h's also. And so all I'm left with is n times x to the n minus 1. That is our general rule, is whenever you have an x to the n, and you want to take the derivative of it, you just bring that n down 
and you're left with x to the n minus 1. Like, like, let's think about the case of x squared. What does the rule say the derivative should be? It says, well, you can instantly know the derivative should just be bringing the 2 down, the n comes out front, and then you have x to the n minus 1. 2 minus 1 would be 1. 2 times x to the 1, which is the same thing as just 2 times x, the answer we got. Incredibly, this is a property that doesn't only work for, for whole numbers n, but for any value n. You could do it for, for n equals 1 half, or n equals 1 fifth, or, or n equals pi, or whatever you want, this, this property works. If, if you want to calculate what is the derivative of, of x to the pi, it would just be bringing the pi down and then subtract 1 from it, x to the pi minus 1, and so on. So, so this is the power rule. It gives us a shortcut whenever we want to calculate the derivative of x to some power.